Hello and good evening. My name is Sam and in case you all don't know me, I run a maritime history YouTube channel known as Historic Travels. As you all may know, we are quickly coming up on Halloween, the night where the dead come out to play. So what I thought would be appropriate on this channel to celebrate the coming of Halloween was to sit down and tell a story of a real life ghost ship, a ship whose crew had to abandon her because they thought the ship was going to sink. However, despite what the crew thought, the ship didn't go down. And after the crew abandoned the vessel, the ship continued to roam without a crew for over 30 years. So join me in today's video as we now tell the story of the SS Bechamo, the story of a real Alaskan ghost ship. The SS Bechamo was a cargo ship built for the Hamburg Line in the year 1914. However, at the time of her construction, the vessel's name was Angro Moffin. The vessel was powered by triple expansion steam engines and could reach speeds of roughly 12 miles per hour. Now, during the First World War, the vessel operated between Germany and Sweden, moving cargo and goods between the two countries. However, after the First World War, as part of war reformations from Germany to the British, the vessel was surrendered to the British government. Now, in the year 1921, the vessel was acquired by the Hudson Bay Company, who then renamed the vessel Bechamo. And for the rest of the ship's life, the vessel would continue to operate for this company, moving goods all around the world. Now, over the course of the next 10 years, things were pretty uneventful for the Bechimo. The ship continued to operate normally, and she completed several voyages, sending cargo and goods all over the world. However, all that changed in October of 1931, when the ultimate fate of the Bechimo would be changed forever. On October 1st, 1931, the SS Bechimo was operating in the waters around the northern part of Alaska. The ship was reaching an end of a cargo run when it suddenly and unexpectedly encountered a very fierce blizzard. The ship became trapped in pack ice. So, since the ship wasn't too far from the Alaskan town known as Burrow, known today as Utqiagvik, the crew decided to leave the vessel and hike around half a mile to the town of Barrow, where they would take shelter until the blizzard passed. Now, fortunately, the crew of the Bechamo was successful in reaching the town of Burrow, and once they got there, the crew simply took shelter and waited for the storm to pass. Two days later, the blizzard finally passed over the town of Burrow, and the crew was able to try to make their way back out to their stricken vessel. When they reached the Bechamo, they discovered to their horror that the vessel had broken free of the ice that it was trapped in and was now adrift. However, fortunately, the vessel hadn't drifted that far and the crew was able to successfully board their ship. When they got on board, they discovered that the vessel had suffered heavy damage in the storm. However, the vessel was still watertight. It's just that the vessel was unable to proceed under her own steam any longer. The ship's engines suffered massive damage. So, what the crew decided to do was simply drop anchor, and they decided to just stay with the vessel and just try to maintain the ship through the winter months until the weather improved enough for a rescue team to come out and get the vessel and tow it into port where more extensive repairs could take place. Over the course of the next few days, the weather outside the ship continued to deteriorate. However, the crew was determined to stay on board the vessel and take care of her, and hopefully they would be able to make it through the winter. After another series of intense storms, the Bechamo once again became trapped in pack ice on October 8, 1931. However, this time the pack ice was much thicker than it was before. The crew was starting to get concerned that the pack ice would actually be able to crush and sink the Bechamo, very similar to what happened to Shackleton's ship the Endurance as it was trying to complete its voyage down in Antarctica. Now, at this point, the Hudson Bay Company was beginning to grow really concerned about their crew members that were stranded on board this frozen Bechamo. So, what the Hudson Bay Company decided to do was just abandon the vessel. They sent an aircraft out to the ship to pick up all of those who were still on board the vessel and bring them home. However, 15 of the Bechamo's 22 crew members decided that they did not want to abandon the vessel. They wanted to try to stay with the ship throughout the winter months and just maintain the ship. That way they could attempt to salvage her once summer came. 
So, reluctantly, the Hudson Bay Company, when they sent the aircraft out to retrieve the crew members that wanted to leave, also brought out food and other provisions, enough for the crew of the HMO to survive the winter months. Now, the 15 crew members of the HMO who chose to stay with the vessel also told members of the Hudson Bay Company about their concerns about the pack ice potentially crushing and sinking the HMO. They also told the Hudson Bay Company that it was nearly impossible to keep the interior sections of the vessel warm given the harsh conditions outside that they were facing. So, the Hudson Bay Company also flew in enough supplies for the crew of the HMO to build a small, basic shelter outside the ship where the crew could safely and comfortably keep an eye on their vessel throughout the harsh winter months. Over the course of the next month or so, things were pretty uneventful for the crew of the HMO who chose to stay and try to maintain the vessel. The crew spent their days hacking away at the pack ice that was building up around the Bachimo's hull, and they were trying to keep the ice from getting to be too thick around the hull, and thus preventing the ice from damaging the vessel any further. However, this proved to be a futile task. There was simply nothing they could do to stop the ice from continuing to build up along the ship's hull. So, the crew did the only thing they could do. They just decided to break away the pack ice that was building up around the HMO's rudder, thus preventing the ice from crushing and damaging it while they waited for spring to arrive. Then, on November 24th, another powerful blizzard struck the area where the HMO lay trapped, and this forced the crew to take shelter in their little house that they built beside the ship while they waited for the storm to pass. When they emerged the next day, they discovered to their horror that the HMO was gone. After the crew of the HMO discovered that their vessel was gone, they simply assumed that the vessel had broken apart and sank in the powerful blizzard that they had experienced the night before. So with nothing else they could do, the crew of the HMO simply packed up and headed back for the Alaskan town of Burrow, where they would wait for their next assignment from the Hudson Bay Company. However, a couple of days after they arrived in the town, they were approached by a seal hunter who told them that he had seen the vessel frozen in pack ice some 45 miles away from where the crew had last seen it. The crew quickly rushed to the vessel and they found the ship, just like the man said, frozen in pack ice. And after a quick damage inspection, they discovered that the vessel was too badly damaged and they were sure that the vessel was going to sink at some point during these, this winter season. So the crew did the only thing they could do. They contacted the Hudson Bay Company and flew some aircraft out to where the ship was currently stuck and they took all of the ship's valuables and cargo off the vessel. At this point, the HMO was officially abandoned. However, to the surprise of the HMO's crew, several months after the vessel was abandoned, the ship was spotted slowly but surely drifting some 300 miles east to where the crew first abandoned the vessel. This would be the first in a series of multiple mysterious sightings of this ship, as the HMO slowly but surely drifted all around the Beaufort Sea, somehow managing to not sink despite the very brutal conditions the vessel was drifting through. The next sighting of the SS HMO was done by a man named Leslie Melvin. He was heading to Nome, Alaska on his dog sled team when he spotted the vessel. Now, I want you to take a look at this map. Do you see where Nome, Alaska is? And do you guys see how far away Nome, Alaska is from Burrow, Alaska, where the ship was first abandoned? Can you believe that the vessel drifted that far and didn't sink? And I mean, like, that's, that's absolutely unbelievable to me. Now, there's something very important all of you watching this video need to understand about the water surrounding Alaska. You see, the waters in this area are extremely dangerous and extremely treacherous, and it wasn't completely uncommon during this time period for people's vessels to become trapped and damaged by the ice, and thus the crews of these vessels had to abandon them. And usually these ships would quickly sink. However, on occasion, sometimes these vessels would last a year or two and they would be seen by people living on Alaska's coastlines just drifting around. And it was the same for the Bechimo. You know, people thought that this vessel, while bigger than most ships that were lost during this time period, would quickly succumb to the conditions and eventually sink. However, that didn't happen. The Bechimo continued to show up year after year after year. And it was just drifting through waters that would be extremely challenging for manned crews to handle without damaging their ship. Yet, somehow the HMO, with no one on board, was surviving all these waters and treacherous conditions. You know, so after a certain amount of time had passed, people began to speculate that something paranormal may have been involved with the HMO. 
Some people claim to have seen ghostly crew members walking the decks of the Beichimo, keeping the vessel afloat in extremely dangerous and extremely treacherous waters. In 1933, another crazy story happened to the Beichimo that also helped signify the vessel as a cursed ghost ship. You see, in 1933, a group of people spotted the Beichimo trapped in pack ice, and they went aboard to take a look around. While they were there, they said a sudden and unexpected blizzard showed up, which forced all these people to take shelter inside the Beichimo's hold for 10 days. I kid you not, they were stuck on this abandoned ship for 10 days. After they left and began to tell the story, the Beichimo quickly gained a reputation for being a cursed ship, and no one wanted to go anywhere near her. Over the course of the next five to ten years, there would be a ton of sightings of the Beijimo as it continued to drift around the water surrounding Alaska. Now, in 1939, there was an attempt to salvage the Beijimo. The crew on a small vessel was able to track down the Beijimo, and they were successful in tying the Beijimo to their smaller ship. However, their ship was way too small to tow the Beijimo into port, so once again, they had to abandon the Beijimo. Now, when World War II started, sightings of the Beichimo slowed greatly. And honestly, this isn't surprising. With World War II going on, people really weren't paying that much attention to a random abandoned ship floating around in the ocean. However, after World War II ended, and in the decades following it, there were, con there were continuous sightings of the Beichimo. I kid you not. The ship was occasionally showing up in the 1940s and 1950s. Now, these are just scattered reports, there's nothing confirmed, but still, the ship was still afloat. I mean, that's absolutely insane. In March of 1962, there was a confirmed sighting of the ship drifting along the coast of Alaska. So the ship was just hanging out in that area. Now, the last confirmed sighting of the Beichimo was in 1969, 38 years after the vessel was abandoned. Let me say that again. The vessel was spotted 38 years after the ship went down, after the ship was abandoned. I almost said went down, but no. 38 years after the ship was abandoned, the ship was seen once again. Absolutely insane. Now, that was the last official sighting of the Beichimo, and the ship hasn't been seen since. People assume that the vessel did eventually sink. However, this is unconfirmed. In 2006, the government in Alaska launched an expedition to try to track down the ship to find out where it went down. But unfortunately, the location of the wreck has yet to be determined. I hope you enjoyed the story of a real Alaskan ghost ship, the SS Beichimo. So before we conclude this video, I want to ask all of you watching, what do you think happened to the Beichimo? Do you think it's still adrift in the waters around Alaska? Or do you think the vessel finally went to the bottom? Let me know what you think in the comments below. All right, everybody. Well, hey, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Have a great day, everybody.